Sometimes growing mushrooms can feel like going to the DMV. Why does my liquid culture not grow? Why is this mushroom not pinning? Let's talk about how long it takes and what you can do to help every step of the way. What's up, mushroom fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today, we are replicating natures from spore to fruit. But before we get started, let's get focused by harness the intelligence of nature for your brain health with Fantastic Fungi's Memory Gummies featuring lion's mane, ashwagandha, and choline. These fungal allies support concentration, ideation, sharpen recall and retention, are vegan and packaged in 100% compostable material. My personal experience with Lion's Mane has been enhanced REM sleep cycles and better dream recall, which improves my mental clarity because I get better sleep. This helps dramatically with running a farm and keeping up with my toddler. Click the link in the description below to get yours now. It's quite amazing that in nature, a spore can land on a surface, germinate, find a compatible partner, fuse together, grow on the substrate and form a mushroom. So in mushroom farming, we're replicating nature in a controlled setting. Nature doesn't go at the same speed as today's world. Sometimes this could lead to impatience and being an overbearing mushroom parent. So what can you do to maximize this stage in the process? So first of all, spores should take about 10 days to two weeks to germinate. During this time, you should try to maintain optimal conditions. So a spore will germinate best at around 70 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, as long as the humidity is consistent and it has nutrients. So this is the importance of using a Petri dish or a liquid culture to germinate your spores. Now, during this step, you can observe your Petri dish to make sure that the growth is happening and that there's not contaminants that are growing instead of your spores. One thing that you wanna watch out for, however, is you don't want to disturb that environment too much, or you don't want to introduce contaminants. So it's going to be very tempting to look inside the Petri dish, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it stays closed and that it stays in an incubator or on a heating pad until you start to see optimal growth. Once you start to see your spores develop, what I like to do is I'll turn the dish around and start to label them as they emerge. And this is a good indicator that you're getting a healthy culture because early on, the fastest, health, healthiest spores will germinate first. And as that plate will fill up with mycelium, you can select for the healthiest cultures to move on to the next stage. So you've made it through the waiting process of your spores germinating. Now it's time to select the best cultures and move them onto a Petri dish or into a liquid culture for isolation. If you're buying a liquid culture, then you'll receive it in the mail and it's a good time to inspect that culture for health. So oftentimes when you receive a liquid culture, the mycelium can settle at the bottom of the syringe so it's best practice to shake or vortex that liquid culture to disperse the mycelium. It only takes one viable cell to grow a mushroom. So as long as you're getting that healthy cell onto a dish, you should be fine. So once you inoculate that isolated culture, it should take about a week on a liquid culture or up, up to two weeks on a Petri dish. So the benefit of using a liquid culture is it will speed up that process because the mycelium is growing in a 3D matrix as opposed to a Petri dish, which is just a two-dimensional surface. But the advantage of using a Petri dish 
is that you're going to be able to observe for contaminants. So be patient at this stage. Make sure you maintain those optimal conditions, just like with spores. The mushroom wants to be around 70 to 72 degrees to continue to grow and consume all of those nutrients that are readily available. The optimal conditions for grain spawn, they can be a little bit more variant. You can have your grain spawn incubate around 65 to 75 degrees and be okay as long as there's a temperature differential when it goes into fruiting. So things to monitor while your mushrooms on grain spawn is that you're gonna look for continuous growth, healthy growth at the leading ends of the mycelium. And you're gonna wanna pay attention for any smells or weird colors on the grains that could indicate contamination. So we talked about the optimal conditions and observations what can you do as a grower during grain spawn? So this is where you can actually start to take some action as a grower. And a good thing to do is you can shake up your grain spawn about halfway through to speed up this process. Now, before you shake your grain spawn, you're gonna wanna make sure that there's no contaminants because then you're just going to shake up those contaminants and ruin your hard work up until this point. So you can also be patient if you don't have time in the upcoming weeks ahead to inoculate your grains onto bulk substrate. And a good way to pause this stage is you can put your grain spawn in a refrigerator. Just make sure that you don't freeze it because that could kill the mushroom. Once that's fully colonized, it's time to move into bulk substrate. Bulk substrate can take about two weeks to six to eight weeks for some mushrooms to fully colonize your bulk substrate. And that is also going to depend on your bulk to spawn ratio, as well as the uh, volume of your bulk substrate that you're growing in. So if you're doing a five pound bag, it's going to be much faster than if you're doing a 10 or a 12 pound bag or a monotub. So things that you can do while your mushroom is growing in bulk substrate is that you're going to wanna to maintain those optimal conditions very similar to grain spawn. So before you trigger your mushrooms to pin, they should be incubating at around 70 degrees, give or take five degrees or so and you're gonna want that temperature to kind of remain constant because if there's big temperature swings, it could create condensation and then that could help accumulate contaminants. It's very important to maintain the environment during this stage. And it's also very tempting to want to open up that substrate or if you're growing in a bin, it's very common for someone to want to take a peek inside but this is just a risk because the mycelium hasn't grown fully yet and it's an opportunity for contaminants to get in. So during this stage, the best thing to do is to be patient and just observe for that mushroom to keep growing. Once your bulk substrate has fully colonized that substrate, it's time to pin. So this stage, can be pretty frustrating for people. But essentially, if you think about replicating nature, there's a few factors that can help induce pinning. The first factor is going to be exposing your mycelium to air or fresh air exchange. So if you're growing in bags, the way to do this is to slice the bag open. If you're growing in a monotub, oftentimes the tubs are designed to create a convection and just by being patient, your mushrooms should experience evaporation that way. Another factor is lighting. So if you're incubating your uh, substrate in the dark by bringing it into light, it should help trigger pinning. This isn't always the case. For some mushrooms, it doesn't matter. A third factor is going to be temperature. So if you think about nature, when it rains, the temperature dips and then this causes mushrooms to pin. So the differential from 
bulk incubation into fruiting should be at least a few degrees to replicate nature. And that way the mycelium will start to form primordia. And then as that water evaporates, the primordia will become pins and then you'll start to see fruits. So this process would take about two weeks to 10 days in general. And if you're seeking second or third flushes, it can last months. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video about replicating nature and staying patient every step of the way. If you'd like to get focused, check out Fantastic Fungi Gummies. You can buy them in the, in the link in the description below. Until next time, much love. Thank you.